We're Beth and Jake and we live in our tiny home on wheels that we converted ourselves with absolutely no experience. After some amazing adventures around Europe, we're back in the UK to see what this island we call home has to offer. In this week's video, we'll be showing you around the Isle of Skye, so sit back and enjoy the ride. First, let's have a walk around the Fairy Glen. So currently we are at the Fairy Glen um, and I think we paid something like three pounds for four hours. Is that right, Jake? Yeah, but you don't need all four hours. We just No, you don't, you don't need that long, but we've really enjoyed walking around. You can kind of walk all up and down the hills around the area. There are a couple of really big waterfalls in the distance that are like really fast flowing right now because it rained really heavy all night. Um, and right now, um, we've just had the most amazing sunshine while we've been walking around here, but it has just started to rain slightly and I think we've got a grey sky there and a nice blue sky there, but the rain is coming for us. So uh, time to head back to the van and head off to the next place. So we are currently at Falls of Ra. Um, we haven't seen it yet, but we can already hear it's quite loud and there's been a lot of rain last night. So we're hoping that the waterfall is in full show. And it's kind of raining right now, but luckily the walk to get to this waterfall is in the forest so we're sheltered from the rain and it's only a short walk and there's a little tiny free car park um, so yes quite a nice easy place to visit and it sounds like the waterfalls are quite what's the word flowing. fast flowing <laughs> yeah let's check them out The next place we're going to show you is Kurang. This is one of our favourite places in the Isle of Skye. It is absolutely mind-blowing as you can see. Between all the cinematic footage, there's things like this, and Jake's already up there, and he's about to help me up here too because it's a bit of a climb. <laughs> right now we are at the Queer Range, Queer Rang, something like that, and it's amazing. We've just come up to the famous needle, and there's a pathway that goes right behind it into this little cluster, mm. and it's like a Almost a secret, I'm sure it's not a secret, but it's like a secret spot because there's like yeah. no one else here. There was a few other people walking down on the actual path and when we started coming up it didn't really look like a path so nobody else is up here and I don't think many people know about it unless like Jake you do all the research beforehand but it's really steep coming up and there was like a little bit where you actually have to climb slightly and Jake literally just had to grab me and <laughs> pull me up. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing up here. As everything else has been in Scotland we're constantly in awe so we're just going to do a little bit more exploring. We've only got like an hour and a half left on the car park because I only put three hours in rather than five. So we'll have to make this quick and see what else we can find and then head back to the car park. Rapido! <laughs> this walk reminded us to embrace the paths that look a little less trodden. We stood in awe surrounded by these impressive spiky rock formations. So we made it back literally just in the nick of time. We put three hours on the car park and we are only just made it. We came here about quarter to nine 
and it was completely empty, nobody here at all. And now, like, the car park is full. Like, I don't know if it would be that enjoyable to walk around because the paths are all quite thin, so you've just got to stop and wait for people to walk past. But it is Part so busy. busy. Now. We did the right thing coming here early. Yeah. And going on a little secret path. Yeah. So now back to the van. You've probably heard of or seen videos of the old man of store before, but have you seen it at night? We decided to visit at night so that we could experience being the only ones here. The only people we saw were some people walking down to the car park and a couple in a tent at the top. It was so peaceful and we were really glad that we decided to visit at night. During the day when we drove past, the car park was packed full and it really put us off. One of the things that we love about Scotland is how it never seems to get dark. At this time of year, it's still light at midnight, which to us is completely crazy. And if you're going to take anything away from this video, take this. The time of day that you choose to do something completely changes your experience of that place. I can't stress that enough. So we're currently walking down Old Man of Store and when we were walking up I didn't really show you what it was like because it's really hard to talk and walk uphill at the same time I get like really out of breath um, so I'll show you now as you can see there's like kind of these stone stairs things and there as well and the path's quite long going up as you can see um, but yeah it's not too bad the walk up but I can't tell for me whether stairs are a good thing or a bad thing because like you know when you've walked up quite a few stairs and it's just like oh I'm not sure if I can do any more <laughs> it kind of got to that point for me um, but some people say it's not that bad it just depends on your fitness level Jake was fine um, so yeah now we're heading down back to the van it's quite late it's already past 10 o'clock <laughs> So if you come to the fairy pools, there is the main car park, which is there. But if you don't mind a 10 minute, five, 10 minutes walk. Yeah, it's like five minutes, isn't it? Yeah, you can walk five minutes downhill, 10 minutes uphill. You can walk uh, a little bit further and you go to a free car park in the middle of the woods, which is what we did because the car park cost five pounds for a car, eight pounds for a camper or motorhome. And it just looks so busy as well. Mm. Like there was a person in like the fluorescent jacket guiding people to the spots, which when that happens, you know, it's probably going to be busy. So we just turned yeah. around there, went straight back to the free car park. We did. And uh, I'm going to preface this with, I know that we are part of the problem, but it was just far too busy for us to enjoy the fairy pools. Yeah. Um, I think part of that is also due to the fact that we enjoyed such quiet times on the NC500 yeah. because it was still the last week of school term. Now it's the Scottish summer holidays, it's so much busier mm. and you can really tell. Um, and we are used to doing things quite early in the morning and late at night. You probably know if you watch a lot of our videos that most of like the films that we take have no people in because we do do a lot um, really early in the morning, really late at night. Yeah, but unfortunately we've got a time limit at the moment yeah. with Sky, so... And we were working today as well, so mm. we popped down here after work at about three o'clock. It's yeah. not a good time to come. So unfortunately we can't do our quiet time of day trips, we've got to try and see it, otherwise we would just be skipping it yeah. entirely. So, <laughs> if you do come here... Make sure you come really early in the morning or... In the evening, in or the just evening. not in the summer holidays. And I'm sure it'll be incredible, but... Yeah, because literally, if it wasn't so busy, I would have went back to the van, got my towel, and probably would have went for a swim. Yeah, so. the formation, the actual pools and little really nice. waterfalls, it's beautiful, but when you're looking at it, and all you can see is other people, it kind of takes away that element of beauty with the nature, so... Yeah. But anyway, let's stop complaining and we'll take you to the next place. Hopefully. This place is absolutely magical. We were asked by a local to keep the name of this location quiet, so that's what we're going to do. Unlike the fairy pools, this waterfall isn't equipped for so much tourism. There isn't a big car park, and the roads to get to it are thin and windy, but there are so many places like this on the Isle of Skye if you just go out and have a little look for them. Okay, so since we didn't really enjoy the fairy pools, we have come to a different spot, which our new friends, Rusty the, Rusty the Adventure Van, 
recommended to us and it's absolutely incredible. So basically it looks a little bit like the fairy pools. Apart from there's no people at all where the only ones here. Mm, and it actually amazing. looks nicer to swim, like the yeah. water's crystal clear. So we're going to have a little explore, maybe a swim and show you around. And now even though it's quite cold we're going to go swimming underneath the waterfall because how often do you get to go underneath a Scottish waterfall? Unless you're Scottish, maybe quite a lot. But let's give it a go, it's pretty cold though. Ooh. And just to note, when Jake says we, he means just him. I'm just going to dip my feet in. So Jake bought me these when we were in Spain, these little, um, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> uh, water shoes. And honestly, they are the best thing ever. I don't hurt my feet on the sofa. <laughs> And so that brings us to the end of our Sky video. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We had the most amazing time on the Isle of Sky, and it's definitely somewhere we want to visit again, maybe during winter or autumn with a bit of uh, snow on top. That would be nice. And if you did enjoy this video, feel free to click the little thumbs up button and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.